In this exercise, we will examine the maintenance procedures for our 40K pipe cleaning nozzle, the Gopher GOH9C. The GOH9C is pressurated up to 40,000 psi and is designed to clean straight pipes from 2 to 6 inches in diameter. It also adapts to larger pipes with the use of a Stone Age centralizer as shown here. Gopher nozzles are ideal for cleaning pipes, evaporator tubes, and removing concrete from drill pipe. This model can handle flows up to 12 gallons per minute and features four interchangeable self-rotating heads. The heads are engineered for high and low flow rates, as well as unplugger and polisher jetting configurations. Examining the features, each one is comprised of a four jet head, a collar, body, inlet nut, and port screw. The inlet nut features a high pressure seal assembly for connecting to high pressure supply lines. Before we get started, let's look at the tools required for your gopher maintenance. You'll need an adjustable wrench, snap ring pliers, a pick, 964 inch hex wrench, slot screwdrivers, blue goop anti seize, and grease. Begin disassembly by removing the seal cartridge from the inlet nut. Use a pick to remove the o-ring that holds the assembly in place. With the o-ring removed, flip the tool. The seal cartridge should drop out of the inlet nut. You may need to tap it gently for the assembly to fall out. Set aside. Now place the tool in a vise using the flats on the inlet nut to secure. With a pick, remove the first o-ring from the tip of the shaft. This is a standard o-ring rounded on the edges and always sits on top. The second o-ring is a backup with a flat edge on the bottom and a concave edge on the top for receiving the standard o-ring. We'll review this again when reassembling. Next, loosen the collar halves with a 964 inch hex wrench and set aside. This is a good time to remove the port screw with a slot screwdriver. Now flip the tool in the vise and secure using the flats on the body. Loosen the inlet nut with an adjustable wrench and unscrew. Note the shaft seal on the inside and the o-ring at the base of the threads. We'll remove those in a moment. With that accomplished, take the tool out of the vise. You can slide the shaft assembly out of the body. At this point, motor oil may drip out of the tool. Next, remove the two bearing rings from one end of the shaft. Now remove the brass sleeve. With that off, the last bearing ring should slide off easily, exposing the shim. Remove the shim, noting the chamfer side faces down, or toward the weight set. Next, locate the spring that connects the weight set with the shaft. Using a pick, remove the first spring end from the notch in the weight set. The second spring end attaches to the hole in the shaft. Use your pick again, and with the spring disconnected, slide it off the shaft and set aside. Finally, remove the shaft seals from the body and the inlet nut. Modified snap ring pliers will assist you with this step. When the shaft seals are out, your last step is to remove the o-ring from the base of the inlet nut threads. Wash all parts and examine them for damage or wear. These are your wear items and they are contained in your service kit. An o-ring, a high pressure seal assembly, and a port screw. With your new replacement parts in tow, Begin the reassembly process at the press where you will install the shaft seals. When installing these seals, we recommend using P80 Grippet or a similar lubricant. Start with the inlet nut. Place the new shaft seal on the MT-105 spacer tool with the lip side facing up. Apply lubricant and press the seal into place. Now replace the o-ring at the base of the threads and set the inlet nut aside. Now place the shaft seal for the body on the RJ-105 spacer tool, lubricate it with P80 Grippet, and press it into place, this time with the lip side facing down. We're through at the press, so let's head back to the vise. Begin by taking the two RJ-007 bearing rings and place them on the shaft. These bearing rings have a wider inner race that should face the shoulder on the shaft when assembling. Next, reconnect the weight set, spring, and the shaft. Insert the first spring end into the hole in the weight set and slide them both onto the shaft. Now connect the second spring end by rotating it into the hole in the shaft as shown. Note the action when the spring is assembled correctly. 
Next, slide the brass sleeve over the shaft assembly. Now place the shim on, with the chamfer side down, facing the weight set. The BC009 bearing ring goes on next. Both sides of this ring are identical, so it doesn't matter which side faces up. With the shaft assembly complete, you are ready to remount it into the body. Start by generously greasing the shaft seal in the end of the body. Now slide the shaft in. At this point, you are ready to fill the body with motor oil. Secure in the vise with the head end down. As you fill the body with oil, twist the shaft at the bottom to allow the oil to settle down into the tool. Continue filling and twisting until oil reaches the bottom and starts to drain out the port. This helps remove air from the body of the tool. When this draining occurs, replace the port screw and continue filling until oil covers the top bearing ring as shown. Keep spinning the shaft to ensure that all the air bubbles up and out. Now grease the shaft seal in the inlet nut and apply blue goop to the threads. Screw the inlet nut back into the body and tighten with an adjustable wrench. Note the vise is on the body flats and the wrench is on the inlet nut flats. You are now ready to reinstall the cartridge assembly into the inlet nut. Note that one side has an o-ring for attaching to the HP connection. Make certain the o-ring side faces up. With the assembly in place, secure it with the o-ring as shown. A pick may help tucking the o-ring into the groove in the inlet nut. Now it's time to burp the oil inside the body. To do this, place the tool in the vise with the inlet end facing down. Using a slot screwdriver, carefully loosen the port screw just enough so any remaining air escapes out the port as shown. Retighten the port screw. With the tool still in the vise, replace the collar halves on the shaft. Tighten the screws with a 964 inch hex wrench. Make certain the two halves are tightened evenly so the gap is the same on both sides. Now you can replace the two O-rings on the tip of the shaft. The backup O-ring goes on first, making sure the flat edge is on the bottom and the concave side faces up to receive the second O-ring. Place that O-ring on next on top of the backup as shown. Finally, replace the head on the shaft. Start by greasing the O-rings on the shaft tip and apply blue goop anti-seize to the threads. Screw on the head. Tighten with an adjustable wrench. Your Geo H9C reassembly is now complete. Before we wrap things up, let's look at the tools and maintenance kits available from Stone Age. We recommend having one or more of these kits on hand for easy field maintenance and we further recommend using all the replacement parts to make the most of your downtime. These are the spacer tools that come in the Geo 612 H9C toolkit. They are handy for replacing the shaft seals in the body and the inlet nut as you saw during reassembly. This is the Geo 600 H9C service kit with replacement parts for routine maintenance. It contains written instructions, an o-ring, a port screw, cartridge assembly, motor oil, and a syringe applicator. The Geo 610 H9C overhaul kit contains more items when it's necessary for a major rebuild. You'll find written instructions, motor oil, a brass sleeve, spring, anti-seize, port screw, shim, o-rings, shaft seals, seal cartridge assembly, and bearing rings. The seal cartridge is also available as a separate component, as are the interchangeable heads. That's it. Thanks for watching, and remember, our technical specialists are always on hand to answer any questions or repair issues you may have.